Chase 5403. Today, an amazing scene as network television and space enthusiasts tuned in to watch a space probe tumble to Earth. A parachute was supposed to open, and helicopter pilots were ready to snag the unmanned spacecraft. Instead, it augured into Utah's West Desert. One of those watching, Robert Bigelow at the Clark Planetarium. He's one of Utah's volunteer NASA Solar System ambassadors and knows a lot about the Genesis, a one-fourth scale model of which hangs in the planetarium. Things go wrong, and the idea behind these uh, you know, cheaper, faster, better missions is to do more of them, and you expect you know, they're probably going to be some failures. Bigelow says the accident is a setback for NASA, but not on the scale of either space shuttle disaster which killed human crews. At the University of Utah today, a crowd gathered to watch and left rather stunned, but still enthusiastic about space exploration, despite the risks and the cost. It's just one of the things that happen in science and trying to design things, and I, don't, I have complete confidence in and NASA and the engineers. We seem to forget the successes we've had whenever a failure crops up and um, we've come a long way in the last 35 years so we need to keep that in mind. My gut feeling is that they've got great programs and that, that we've learned a lot and science has is, is progressed with their efforts. The image of an expensive spacecraft crashing to Earth is one NASA surely wanted to avoid but space enthusiasts hope it doesn't puncture public support of space science. I really am very confident that they're going to be able to get some science out of this. It's going to be a lot more work to get it, but I think they'll still be able to do that. The next step is to assess the damage and retrieve the fallen Genesis. John Daly, Eyewitness News. Okay, and thank you, Chris. Uh, we'll be coming back live on NASA TV as we have more information. Okay, uh, Genesis 5, uh, it was big screen TV with a most unusual show an aerial ballet with a surprise ending. Several hundred space buffs watched at Kingsbury Hall. Many were parents with kids skipping school to see a bit of space history. My daughter and son were both interested in science. The anticipation was intense, especially for this family, the son and grandchildren of Don Burnett. He's NASA's top scientist on the Genesis project. As the spacecraft came into view, the crowd cheered. But when they realized it had crashed, cheers turned to groan. Paul Burnett appeared to be sobbing as he saw his father's project jammed in the mud. A tear rolled down his cheek. But it's certainly not the way we would like to have seen it have ended today. From a personal standpoint, this must be it's devastating. Crushing. This is. 17 years of our family's life. It's more than that, 19, 1983. So this is it, and this, was, this has been his dream, and this is the, the keystone to his career and everything that he's wanted to do since he was my kid's age. And uh, this is it, you don't get a second chance. The Burnett grandchildren shed some tears too. A few rows back, Aaron Allen wasn't sorry he'd brought his own kids. I think it's actually quite valuable to, to recognize that science isn't always right. The plans don't always go, but there's something that you can get out of it no matter what. Okay, and thank you, Chris. Uh, we'll be coming back live on NASA TV as we have more information available and we do have... Tonight, a military helicopter flew what's left of the experiment back to a temporary clean room near Dugway's Michaels Field. Inside, scientists carefully opened the wrapping and began probing and pulling out broken pieces of the experiment. All the atoms are there. All the collectors are there. It's a case of, of doing forensic science. This was to be the first in two stops for what was to have been a gentle mid-air rescue of a fragile glass-like array that had captured very special atoms from the solar wind, atoms that could give scientists clues about the formation of the solar system. This is what that ethereal solar wind probably looked like 4.5 billion years ago. Pilots Cliff Fleming and Dan Rudert had rehearsed over and over again how to snag the parachuting Genesis capsule in mid-air, but it was all for naught. The parachute never opened. The exuberance, the anticipation, of, as you said, five years of training, waiting for this one day, one chance. Uh, I could sense in my crew and in Cliff's voice that, uh, you know, emotionally everything just drained. 
And Drain it did, too, inside the Michaels Field hangar, where almost 300 VIPs had gathered to celebrate. What started out as cheers when the capsule entered the atmosphere turned into silence when they saw it tumble through the air and hit the ground. For NASA's Don Swee, who babied the project from the very beginning. It's a difficult moment right now. Obviously, our piece of it is having the real estate uh, with it, but seeing it come on down, uh, you know, that's a scenario that nobody wanted to see. The capsule hit the ground hard, breaking open. The cylinder containing the solar samples was also breached. The remains will now go back to Johnson Space Center, where scientists will try to fit some of the broken pieces together, perhaps even find a new way to clean up the contamination in hopes of salvaging parts of this experiment. We will figure what went wrong with this and we'll recover from this. What